Much reporting suggested that the reasons for the attacks on Syria were related to a desire on Israel's part to carry out those attacks while they were still possible, i.e. in the dying days of the Trump administration and before the arrival of a new dispensation under President-elect Joe Biden. I'd like to suggest something different, however, in terms of my own contacts on the ground in southeast Syria and Deir Azor and uh, friends who work closely on that area, spoke of a mo an increased movement of Iranian weaponry through the warehouses in that area in the days prior to the attack, possibly with the Iranian intention of carrying out some kind of attack uh, on the anniversary or close to the anniversary of the killing of Cod's Force Commander Major, Major General Qasem Soleimani. And from this reading, the Israeli action was a kind of preemptive strike to show the Iranians that Israel knew what was being planned, knew what was being moved, and had no intention of allowing such an attack to take place. Iranians talk about retaliation quite a lot. Having said that, if we look at the track record of Iranian uh, retaliation, it's impossible not to notice that a, a number of senior is Iranian and also Iran-associated or aligned individuals have been assassinated over the last decade and more without real and serious retribution ever being taken by Iran for the killing. And most uh, significantly, I would say, uh, the uh, Hezbollah military mastermind, Imad Murnia, who of course was killed in Damascus in February 2008, and whose death has never been effectively accounted for or retaliated for by Iran. Similarly, with regard to Major General Qasem Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al Mohandis of the Iraqi organization Qatayb Hezbollah, killed on the road from Baghdad Airport in January 3rd, 2020, you know, again, a year on, we've not yet seen any real and serious retaliation. And I think one has to begin to take into account the technical difficulties and limitations that the Iranians suffer from when finding their way to the kind of high-level targets that alone would be seen as sufficient retaliation for the killing of figures uh, on that level. With regard to the Israeli considerations, which I think is an important matter here, uh, the clock is running down on the Trump administration. The Trump administration has given Israel a considerable leeway with regard to activities in the region. The Trump administration took a hard line against Islamic Republic of Iran, and that was an ideal framework, if you like, for Israeli activity in this regard. And certainly things could be about to change, and without a doubt, there is concern in both Israel and other allied regional capitals at the possibility of that change. Having said, but I think one should always take into account also the operational uh, logic of these actions, the actions taken by Israel on Syrian soil and so on, rather than any broader consideration with regard to the United States or any other power. At the end of the day, it is a strategic goal of Israel to disrupt the attempt by Iran to entrench itself and consolidate itself in Syria. And that overriding strategic and then operational consideration, I think, is what governs Israeli decision-making in this regard over and above any broader political or diplomatic consideration. So I'm uh, talking about the book, and uh, the interesting thing I think about the book is that I was uh, in all... There is real concern in Israel with regard to the possibility that a new Biden administration may seek to sort of quickly rush back to the JCPOA, the, the nuclear deal signed by the Obama administration in 20. 15. And specifically, that's because there are already reports of initial contacts between the Biden team and the Iranians with regard to this issue, even prior to the inauguration of, of President uh, Biden. Most high on Israeli concerns or, or high on Israeli concerns is also the issue of sanctions relief, the possibility that the United States might be induced as it seeks to quickly get back towards a deal to relieve the sanctions and maximum pressure policy on Iran even prior to a return to a new nuclear agreement. And the result of that could be that whilst there isn't even a, a nuclear agreement back on the table, there'll be money starting to flow again to the Iranian ballistic missile program and to the Iranian uh, support for paramilitary and terror proxies throughout the region, often directed against Israel. So